What is up my beautiful humans, Andy Valentine here and we're going back today into Fusion 360 to take a look at the sheet metal tool and how you can use it to make like wrap around face mask type things uh, which you can then detail on a flat plane which makes life a load easier. It's really good if you wanted to make say the horns of a certain green trickster god or the, the crown of a red witchy lady. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so for this tutorial, we need something to model around. Now, I've got a very crude uh, photo telemetry scan of my head here, which I've sized to be the same size as my massive bonds. Um, but you can just download a Thingiverse model of a generic head. It would work. Uh, just try to scale it so that the size between your temples is about the size of a normal human. Um, mine is like almost 16 centimeters and around the skull is 59 in a bit. So you kind of can just use those to gauge that you've got the, the model the right size. What we're going to do here is to put a mask around the face and make the mask flat and then put any details on it and then re-put it around the face. And it's actually really easy. So here's how we go about it. I'm gonna start with a new sketch that uses top down here. And what you can see is I've actually put the middle of the origin right in the middle of the kind of the, the spot between the eyes. So where I'm going to go from here is look straight down at the top of the model from the other way around. And then use the, actually I'm gonna start by putting a line, a straight line to the side here. That'll be kind of obvious in a moment as to why. Then use a fit point spline, so a curved spline to make kind of like three points around the head where I want the mass to go around. The reason I put this line here is I can then use the tangent tool between that curved line and that straight line. And it will just make this front point here exactly straight so that when I do the next bit now, which is create a mirror of this line on the center line, the two fronts are going to be exactly in line and be straight with one another. So then you can just fiddle around with these points a little bit. And you'll notice that when you do that, they'll mirror on the opposite side as well. You can see how the line gets darker when it's inside the head versus when it's outside, well, the, any STL really. So you can just use that just to play around with these bits. And I'm not going to be 100% accurate here, but it will just give you an idea of the processes I'm going through uh, in order to apply this. So let's just get this last one. Come on. Come on. There we go. I might want to just change this angle a bit. Oh no, it's because I'm still in the move mode. You know, this is this is close enough for this example. So that's roughly where the thing is going to curve around that point of the head. Now there's one more thing I need to do here as a preparation. So what I'm going to do is zoom into the top. And in the point where the two bits meet in the middle, I'm just gonna get rid of the center line so it stops the mirroring. And then put a small straight line from one point of it straight away across. And then remove these parts of the curve. Oh, as well as that mirror line now. So these two parts that were curved, let's just remove those. So it goes all the way curved in, then there's that little straight bit at the very front and then curves back out again. That straight bit is going to become very important in a moment. Let's finish that sketch. Now we're gonna go into the sheet metal tool. So if the sheet metal tool, if you've never used it, allows you to do exactly what it says, create sheet metal, which you can then apply things like bends and stuff like that too, in a very engineering way. What we're gonna use it for is to create uh, basically a flange, which basically means turn this curve into a straight thing. And we're gonna make a rough rough thing here in steel. These are basically some of the different materials that I have with different thicknesses. Um, that's a whole other thing that we don't need to get into now, but we can talk about that in another video. So I'm gonna create just this as two sides. So uh, side one and side two we'll say, so side one is currently on the outside of the curve. Side two will be on the inside of the curve and then symmetric will be kind of in the middle of the curve. So it depends which what you want to do. For this, we're going to want to use the outside of the curve because the inside is where our head is. 
and then go two sides and just bring the bottom down a bit there okay so here's my piece of sheet metal roughly on the face you can see that's roughly there the reason we've done this as sheet metal is sheet metal has this fun little thing where you can modify and unfold if you do that and then click on this center section the center object so long as you've got unfold or bends selected here if you don't it'll Oh, well, I mean, the, the bends are currently uns are currently selected, so it makes no difference. But if you have that and that unselected, it will ask you to choose which bends you want to straighten, which you can do like that. But unfold or bends will usually just do it, and it'll be nice, just a flat panel. Now that we've got this, we can start to design our mask in a flat plane, which makes life significantly easier. So if I come into here, I'm just going to drop a... Uh, center line down the middle for easier mirroring so put that there and let's say this is something like the scarlet witch one but not exactly so we'll put like a horn here that comes down into a middle point and then something that goes out to the edge and we'll just go over the edge it's absolutely fine and then this bit kind of mirrors it but then comes down to here and then there's a bit that goes over the nose i can't remember exactly what the model looks like but it's it's in this ballpark right okay and then we just close this bit up so there we've got a sheet ready to to work with this and then we're going to take all of this except for that center line there mirror it on the middle line, select these parts, extrude through the sheet metal and use the intersect tool to just do that bit, which leaves us with this. And then when I click refold faces, ta-da, it goes back to the shape that it was at. So I've already got a very close estimation of that crown, how I want it which is really cool. Now, if I just undo that, there are loads of other things you can do here. So for example, if I was to do another line on here and just, you know, draw some, some extra detailing or whatever. Oh, no, I'm in the single line tool. Let's just look at it straight on from the front. If I put in some like detailing, let's say there's a section here and then, come on. And then another one that comes down like this. The actual specifics of these details don't matter here. Put in my center line again. Just, you know, make my mirroring nice and easy. Take both of those, mirror them over to the other side. Okay. And then I want to use these two things to cut out. And again, I'm just going to cut out. Oh, not that. I don't want to cut out that whole thing. Cut out. No. Let's try again. Those two pieces. E. What is going wrong here? There we go. Cut out. So I've got some shapes in there. They're a little bit more interesting. And then maybe across the nose here, I want to add um, some kind of raised detail. So it could be... Um, something like this yeah and then it goes <laughs> oh, this is this is a horrible design <laughs> so i just put a big big nose on top of the middle of this thing oh. like that um, and then i want to actually make this thing raised actually let's mirror it again so mirror these two bits on that center line center line that doesn't exist <laughs> like so and then I can take these bits and actually bring them outwards so create a raised section on there across the middle and then again when I refold faces it will calculate all of those curves and curve it all nicely around the face. 
Now, obviously, there is a lot of kind of like alterations and kind of small changes you're going to want to make to this in order to make it right. But as far as getting a lot of the way there very quickly, it's a very good way of doing that. One thing that you might want to note is this is then not interactable in certain ways as a because it's a, a metal, uh, a sheet metal. So you might want to convert it to a more editable STL, which you can do by going back onto solid by create a boundary fill, click on your object and then do the select cells as the same object and then create a new body from that. So then you have your sheet metal here and you also have your body, which is the same thing. So this is now not a, this is now a mesh as opposed to being a sheet metal. So you can work, there's some tools that basically don't work with a sheet metal. So that's a good way of doing it. Also, if you need to make adjustments, you can obviously bring up your initial sketch and move about parts on that. And then when it updates, you'll see the model will change so you can adjust kind of all the parts as you need to make them fit your design. Sometimes it just takes a second to catch up, but there you go. That's the principles of using sheet metal to make a very quick mask that wraps around your head. So as you can see, it's a really useful way of making things wrap around your head, but still being able to detail them in a flat plane, which is significantly easier. Now, I hate to say it, but obviously, if you do want to like and subscribe, you know where it is. It does help me out a lot, and I love you all the more for it. Otherwise, I shall see you next time. Laters!